My name is Yarel Shabini and this is my first solo show in the US at the QArt Foundation. The show is called Forms of Regulation and Control, curated by Naeem Mahayman. AP and CNN have just called that Biden has won the election, so it's the perfect time for the context of this show. You can hear the jubilation, it's a really joyous day and it's been a really tense election week. And that kind of joy that we're hearing now from the election results, I want people to find within my work this moment of joy and engagement. We've been working on this for a couple of years and I needed to think about a work that responded to the social and political context of this time. With COVID, with Black Lives Matter, the world has changed. And one of the things I was really keen to do was to make a work that unpicked and questions forms of regulation and control within society. I've been writing questions and asking through trivia nights, pub quizzes, asking people, asking the audience to unpick assumptions about how they see the world, about themselves. In the context of COVID, we needed to think about something where an audience didn't need to be present. So I started on my first ever printed series of questions that I've been writing for 15 years and I made a set of new questions that responded to the current context. So these printed questions have the answers written discreetly in the corner or some of them don't have the answers. They're the answers that you have to figure out. You have to search within yourself and find the answer and be very honest with yourself and expose to your prejudices or assumptions. So I've been thinking of a way to figure out in my own head Yara's particular use of humor. And not only do I think of the contrast between British comedy shows and American ones, but also this idea that in American television shows it's been a long tradition to have the laugh track so that you understand when you're supposed to laugh, which infantilizes the audience a little bit. And I think with her works, the the humor is very subtle and you're never really sure if you're supposed to smile or grimace or feel uncomfortable and that's really a good use of humor to keep you off balance. There are four pieces of work in the show and one of them is border control based on a children's game called Buzzwire where you have a metal handle and you have to traverse an area without touching because metal to metal causes an electric trigger. You've got one minute to cross the US-Mexico border You've got three chances. And of course, increased border crossings increases your chances of getting to the other side safely. I really like to use playful formats to engage audiences. I'm really passionate about participation and I feel at the moment that somebody interacts and engages with an object, it changes the way they think about the work. So for me, I'm using a very accessible, very recognisable, playful game and making it into a conversation and a question about geopolitics, about the movement of people, about the movement of borders and actually how ephemeral borders are and how man-made they are. By creating a piece of work that asks people to traverse a border, asks us to question why those borders are there, who put them there, how long have they been there and question this idea of movement and control. Another piece of work in the show is called Occupied and Freed and it's simply an intervention on the toilet lock. Q Gallery bathroom door has an indicator lock and I've changed occupied and vacant to occupied and freed. It begs that question about occupation and land and the freedom of movement. The main piece of work in this show is called Other Forms of Regulation and Control. Hygrothermographs are machines that all major galleries and museums have. They have them often in the periphery, out of sight, and they're mechanical analog machines that have been used for the past 100 years to monitor the temperature and the humidity of a gallery space. This is for the preservation of artworks so that the art conservators can regulate the environment, control the environment, and monitor what's happening in this public space. I was really interested in the politics of that, about a machine that is on the periphery, that's out of view, that is being used to monitor the environment. I've got three of these machines. Now, ethnographically speaking and scientifically speaking, there are three types of human hair that are based on race. Caucasian hair, Asian hair and Afro, African hair. 
So these machines measure humidity using human hair. I replace the human hair with these three new types of hair. Okay, Josie, so each week you're going to be changing the graph on the high growth thermograph. So the first thing you do is you turn this to open and you'll be able to hear a little click. And then we'll take this off incredibly gently and just put it to the side. So you'll find there's a bolt in here. So you unscrew this and then really gently. Usually these machines are used to protect and preserve an artwork. But this is an intervention where the machines themselves are the artwork. They're not preserving another artwork. The work is me repositioning them and questioning what we're doing and what these machines are doing. So the machines become in full view. Graphs that are monitoring this data is going to be collected and over the period of five weeks, cumulatively, it's going to be displayed. So you have Afro, Caucasian and Asian data comparative for each week. I like this idea of it being a cumulative documentation of the space, asking us to look at what is on the periphery, look at the forms of control, look at what is, what is monitoring society, what the environmental monitors are and bring them into full view. This racialized element, the hair, was being used to monitor the space in the context of COVID, in the context of Black Lives Matter, in monitoring, in data collection and how we interpret data became more and more relevant within the last few months and this work was made in response to that. As an artist, I'm absolutely passionate about making work that's accessible. I always like to make my work open and non-didactic, so I'm not telling people what they should read into a piece of work. How we can get audiences into gallery spaces, but how we can make works that actually people can understand and relate to in different ways. To have conversations that are deeper conversations about race, identity, politics, data, and the monitoring of society. My passion is about making work that responds to context, to sight, to audience, about making work about now, about 2020, about the pandemic, about COVID, about increased police brutality, about new rules that are being set in the White House and the Senate and in Britain that controls the movement of people. The most important thing for me is that people come and enjoy the exhibition, that they have fun, that they laugh, that they might see something differently, but ultimately that they ask questions, the bigger questions about society, about how we see the world and our place within it.